Hi, today we wanted to talk through the process of cutting your footage for stock. If you haven't read the submissions guidelines, then I suggest that you do so after this video. In this video we're going to be looking at organising your footage, software, shot selection and exporting for upload to Airstock. So here in the finder I have my various project folders which contain the raw clips to the project and I'm going to save the edited versions into a separate folder for stock. Let's just delete that for now. I also have a folder here for the project files when working in Premiere. You could even have a folder for stills as well but the key thing is to keep that folder for uploading stock clear so that when you come to actually upload your footage you can do it all in one hit. Now there are lots of editing software packages out there. We like to use Premiere, there's also Final Cut, Avid. Premiere is nice because it comes with the Adobe Creative Cloud which includes Prelude, Photoshop, all these other useful applications. So I'm going to create my project here, Winter Garden. Browse for that project folder. I've already got it, so we're just going to overwrite that. I can quickly drag my footage in. And what all these editing software packages have is an amazing array of tools for tweaking, increasing the quality of your footage. But for stock, we don't need to touch any of those things. All we're looking to do is choose the correct in and out point so we're getting the very best out of the footage. And unfortunately, in order to get that then out of the editing software, you will have to re-encode it. To completely avoid that step altogether, you can use a piece of software called MPEG Stream Clip. Now the benefit of this is that when you export your footage from it, you're just saving a copy of the data, you're not re-encoding anything. So editing your stock and selecting the shots. I've already selected these two shots because um, I know they're great. Let's jump over to MPEG Stream Clip and demonstrate the process there first. Going to open up this clip here. As you can see the playback is a little stuttery. And from viewing it before I know that this bit of landing gear comes down into shot at the beginning so we don't want to give anybody that. Wait till it's cleared the frame and then we can press I on the keyboard which is the universal shortcut for in point and then we go to the end and I know that there is a slight jolt here as it stops yawing around the subject of this winter garden here so let's hit the in the out point there again universal shortcut O and then we just simply go over to edit trim and that has now removed the areas of footage from the preview that were outside the in and out points and we can just simply go file save as put this into our stock folder and give it a meaningful name I'm gonna identify it with my name then the subject name and a numerical identifier and you'll see that this process is very fast because it's not re-encoding it it's just saving a copy of that part of the data which is what we want to do however as you can see the process is a little slower than editing with a software package if you had a hundred clips 
in Premiere or Prelude, you'd want to get through it a lot quicker than that. So let's just look at this example again. If I hit tilde on the keyboard here, I can put this to full screen. Play that through. You can see I'm getting much more smooth playback. There's the prop going into shot. Come back and that's our end point. Scrub to the end here. And tab back a few frames. Yep, yeah, there. That's our out point. That's all we need to do. Press tilde to go back. If you don't know what tilde is, it's the curly little, sorry, wavy line key next to Z on the keyboard. And now we have our next shot. It's really great at the start. Get a nice reveal of the top of this beautiful building. But once we've cleared the building, uh, we're no longer looking at that. We're looking at a fairly overexposed shot of the Sheffield city skyline and it's pretty much another shot so it's a different piece of stock. We've also got a touch of drone shadow on the adjacent building so we don't really need any of that. We can cut it here. So I'm just going to press O for the out point and that's done. Go back with tilde. Got a few more examples which I'm going to import from the other projects. With this shot, there are lots of uh, corrections which the pilot is doing as they're just lining up with these giraffes. And so we don't want to include any of that. We just want it from the point that we kind of really got that super glassy smooth track into the giraffes, which starts around there. So that's where I'm going to set my end point, and the end is great as well. So that's another good example of just making sure that the clips you're providing are of 100% quality. It's worth also pointing out this point that this particular piece of footage is at 24 frames per second. Now you shouldn't ever tamper with the footage in any way, just keep it the original frame rate, whether it's 60, 120, the end user, the customer, can slow it down if they want that effect. But for stock, it needs to be in its original format. And the same applies for the frame size as well. With regard to frame size, anything above 3840 by 2160 is regarded as 4K. Anything below that, HD but anything below 1920 by 1080 will not be accepted. It's also worth pointing out that once you've uploaded a 4K version, the airstock system will automatically generate the HD version. You don't need to upload two separate encodings of the same material. Final example here in this clip, this is shot with a GH4. It's been shot with the flat color profile, so no color grading no additional stabilization and keeping everything in its original format is essential. As you will have seen from the submissions guidelines, any recognizable people will require you to provide a model release form. Uh, in this case none of these people are going to be recognizable. So nothing to worry about there. So I'm just going to remove these for now because they're part of a different project. So I can go through now making a new sequence from each clip. And then select both sequences and export media. Making sure that it's in its original format, H.264, and then we need to set the bit rate. Now, to find out what that is, if you don't know, 
you can check in QuickTime by looking at the movie inspector oh just turn that off movie inspector up here and that tells us we have a data rate of 63 megabits per second or you can use an application like file info I've already got it open I'll just open it again just open up the file so this will give you a much greater breakdown of the files metadata and again we can see a more accurate bit rate here of 62.9 So we're going to set that target bit rate to 60 and the maximum bit rate 65. Cue that and this will open the files inside the media encoder where we can check the path and the file name. You want that to go into stock and which one is that? Yeah, that's the second shot so that should be Two, and this one we'll just call 1B for now. Start the process and as you can see because it's re-encoding it is going to take longer than using MPEG stream clip to just save a copy of the data without re-encoding. So let's just jump on ahead as if these are complete now. Can come over to our uploads page, jump into the finder, and we would see here the finished encodes. I'll just use this one for now because it's the only one that's done. Let's drag and drop that, and away you go. And thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been a useful video and it's very much a test to see how these things work out for future users so if you have any requests or comments um, about this process or other parts of the process which we'll go into in detail then please get in touch thanks again bye bye